Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthy Hong Kong. In this short video, we're going to talk about why we're following Dr. Sinclair in taking alpha-lipoic acid, or ALA. In fact, in taking ALA, Dr. Sinclair himself was following the father of longevity study and the man who developed the free radical theory of aging, Dr. Denham Harmon. We also found that ALA is on the daily supplement list of Dr. Mark Hyman, Dave Asprey and Ben Greenfield, three other people that we follow. But first a disclaimer. In this video we are just sharing our anti-aging journey and the supplements we are using. It is not medical advice. Alpha-lipoic acid or ALA is an organic compound found in all human cells which plays a vital role as a cofactor in glucose metabolism and energy production in the mitochondria. It is a strong antioxidant and while most other antioxidants are either water or fat soluble, ALA is soluble in both. Do note that alpha-linoleic acid, which is a type of omega-3 fatty acid found in plants, is also abbreviated as ALA, so please do not confuse these two. Humans produce alpha-lipoic acid internally in small amounts, and many foods also contain alpha-lipoic acid. These include spinach, broccoli, yams, potatoes, tomatoes, Brussels sprouts, rice bran. Red meat, and particularly organ meat, is also a source of alpha-lipoic acid. Dr. Sinclair did mention alpha-lipoic acid as one of the supplements he is taking in a couple of podcasts. Here is the one with Dr. Mark Hyman. It's good, um, and I take um, actually alpha-lipoic acid yeah, for mitochondria. Acid, right? Yeah, and one of the actually the thing that turned me on to that was uh, I spoke to Denham Harmon's family. So yeah. Denham Harmon, you may know him. He's but, the father of the oxidative stress theory of aging. Yeah, and and so. Uh, he, I, I was fortunate to win an award with his name on it, and I went out there, and his family were very generous to host me. And he was still alive at the time. He passed away a few years ago, but he was still healthy and going into work at 92. And so I said, what is, what's his secret? Oh, lipoic acid. Uh -huh. I, I thought, well, at the very least, it didn't hurt him. So again, no. that, that was- I, I take it every day. Yeah. It's, it's, if you understand what it does, it's basically one of the most powerful antioxidants that helps boost glutathione, which is detoxifier. It's anti-inflammatory. It helps your mitochondria. It helps detoxify from metals. It, it sort of uh, uh, helps with blood sugar and diabetics. It helps with diabetic neuropathy. I mean, it's a really yeah. well-studied molecule. Right. Yeah, and it's all about the mitochondria. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I would say that too. We also the, the, talked uh, about ALA with Dave Asprey on Bulletproof Radio. I'm taking alpha-lipoic acid. How, many, how much? Me too. Uh, it's a pretty large capsule. I'd have to check, but it's probably 500, at, at least five. Yeah. It's about 500. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So I'm doing ALA a one gram morning and night for my body weight. I'm about in two or five right now. Uh, so my kids are getting it once a day. Uh, it's just in the morning. They didn't used to get it, but I've added it in recently. Yeah. Well, it's actually, it, it seemed to be helpful, uh, for viral infections. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Oh, and you know how um, I think a lot of people would have read in the New York Times or elsewhere that a loss of smell is a potential symptom of, of COVID-19. And I looked up what, what's the cure or what's a potential cure for that. And it was alpha lipoic acid, which was great news because I was already taking it. Nice. And uh, I'll tell you very briefly why I started taking it. There's a, there was a, a scientist who's now unfortunately passed away, but he was, his name is Denham Harmon. And he was known for uh, the free radical theory of right. aging. Famous guy. And I, yeah, I managed to uh, meet at least his family. Mm -hmm. He was in his 90s um, and at home when I visited. But uh, they said his family let me in on a little secret, which was that uh, Denham has been taking, had been taking this uh, alpha lipoic acid for years, most of his life, um, mostly thinking that it was an antioxidant. And uh, he worked until his uh, early 90s. And so I figured, well, if it didn't hurt him, what's the least <laughs> that can. That N equals one guinea pig, but it was a really smart guinea pig. I like that. <laughs> uh, what, what about uh, within, within alpha lipoic acid, there, there's the normal cheap stuff. There's, R, there's also R alpha lipoic acid, which is racemic. And, and the first guy to launch that came to me in, I want to say 2000, uh, before anyone knew what I was doing. And we talked about launching something. And then there's also potassium uh, R alpha lipoic acid. Do you go for the fancy stuff or the cheap stuff? Uh, mine's the L, so just the bulk cheap the stuff. The cheap stuff, okay, cool. Is it, am I wasting my money? I don't think you're wasting your money, but there's there's more efficacy from the R versus S form. 
In the audio clip that you just listened to, Dave Asprey and Dr. Sinclair spoke about the RNS forms. Let me explain what these are. Alpha lipoic acid has two forms, RNS, which are isomers, that is to say, the same chemical formula but different orientation of the atoms. The R form is the only one that exists in nature. However, the manufacturing process produces an equal mixture of both, hence most supplements are of this form. There are some supplements, however, which are explicitly of the R form only. You may see the term racemic mix. This just refers to a 50-50 RNS mixture. Trials have shown that the R form is more bioavailable. However, most of the trials have used the racemic mix. So one question is, is the R form or the RS mixture better? Let's have a look at this study. The study shows that the R form is better absorbed and the S form is more rapidly cleared. This would imply that the R form is better. However, the mixture of R and S seems to be more stable. It's worth noting that the R form is unstable, so it is normally sold as a sodium salt of the acid called NARALA. And the conclusion was that it was not clear which form is most appropriate for future clinical studies. We compared the price of the racemic mix with the pure R form. We used Doctor's Best brand as they have both versions. We can see that the R form is about 10 times the price per gram. Even accounting for a 2 times better bioavailability, it would still be 5 times more per gram. We have included both links to these in the description. You may have heard from the audio clip that Dr. Sinclair is taking the mixed form of ALA and this is what we are taking also. ALA has a number of potential benefits, as Dr. Hyman mentioned in his podcast. Here we have listed six of them. Let's go through and have a look at the scientific papers behind each one. Here is a study that looked at something which is topical at the moment, whether ALA would help patients to recover the sense of smell after they have had an upper respiratory tract infection. As you may know, a permanent loss of smell is one potential outcome of having had COVID-19. 23 patients were given 600 milligrams of ALA daily, all of whom had some level of olfactory dysfunction. The results were that 61% of them showed either slight or remarkable improvement in the ability to smell. The study concluded, the results indicate that alpha lipoic acid may be helpful in patients with olfactory loss after upper respiratory tract infection. ALA has also been shown to lower glucose levels and to improve the lipid profile, basically the cholesterol and the triglyceride levels, in the blood. This meta-analysis looked at 24 randomized controlled trials and found that insulin, insulin resistance, HbA1c, triglycerides, total cholesterol and LDL were all lowered without any detrimental effect on HDL. Inflammation tends to rise as we get older and chronic inflammation can lead to or exacerbate other chronic conditions. This study is a meta-analysis of 18 trials that looked at how ALA reduced the markers of inflammation in patients with metabolic diseases. They concluded that Overall, the current meta-analysis supported the beneficial effects of ALA administration on decreasing inflammatory markers such as CRP, interleukin-6 and TNF-alpha among patients with metabolic syndrome and related disorders. Another study looked more specifically at C-reactive protein levels and concluded that ALA could significantly lower CRP levels in patients where the marker is elevated. ALA has been prescribed for 50 years in Germany as a drug to treat nerve damage caused by diabetes. A number of trials have been conducted to review ALA's efficacy in this role. Here is one looking at oral administration of 600, 1200 and 1800 milligrams daily. You can see that the results were positive whilst also showing that a dose of 600 milligrams was optimal. ALA has been proposed as a supplement to help lose weight. Here is a meta-analysis of 10 trials which concluded that ALA showed a small but significant short-term weight loss. So I would not view ALA as primarily for weight loss, but if it helps, that is good. I left being an antioxidant to last, as there are questions as to how effective exogenous antioxidants are. However, ALA does have these properties, so I think they are worth mentioning. ALA in its reduced form, DHLA, 
dihydrolipoic acid are both potent antioxidants. They act both directly in scavenging free radicals and reactive oxygen species in cells and in regenerating endogenous antioxidants such as vitamin C and vitamin E. One concern with ALA is how bioavailable is the supplement. It is quickly absorbed into the bloodstream but also appears to be quickly metabolized and excreted. However, there was one study which looked at the amount of ALA and its immediate metabolites in urine of healthy subjects after a dose was administered and it reported that only 12% was actually excreted in the urine. The study concluded that this did not play a significant role in elimination of ALA, so we need to look elsewhere to find what is happening to the molecule after it has entered the body. Finally, many of the studies we used looked at outcomes so however the ALA is being metabolized, it appears to have had a beneficial effect. Here is a quick summary of the benefits of ALA that we have just gone through. Although, as always, more research is needed, we think that ALA has a number of potential benefits while not being expensive or having any noticeable side effects, and that is why ALA is in our trial regimen. So what about dosage? Though there is no set dosage, most evidence suggests that 300 to 600 mg is sufficient and safe. For diabetics research, 600 mg seems most commonly used and this is what we are taking. And when to take it? A study has shown that alpha-lipoic acid supplements are best taken on an empty stomach as certain foods can lower the acid's absorption. And do the, does it have any side effects? Alpha-lipoic acid is generally considered safe with little to no side effects. Research shows that adults can take up to 2,400 milligrams without harmful side effects and it has been used in Germany for over 50 years as a therapy for diabetic neuropathy and retinopathy. I take mine in the morning on an empty stomach, however my wife takes it after lunch as she has a more sensitive stomach. I hope that you found the video informative. If you do like this video please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. As YouTube has stopped sending out email notifications for new video releases since August the 13th, 2020, we wanted to inform you that we will release our new videos twice per week every Monday and Friday. We shall of course continue to interview longevity and health experts from all over the world, so please stay tuned. I wish you all well and will speak to you soon.